this video I'm going to be demonstrating how to graph a system of linear inequalities. I am under the assumption that you know how to graph lines in slope intercept form or standard form and you have graphed inequalities by themselves before so this is just basically to show you a system of linear inequalities. I've got two equations here both are in slope intercept form. All right, I have color coded them just because it makes uh, graphing these a little bit easier and if you make a mistake you're easier to be able to find your mistakes. All right, so this first one I'm going to do in purple. It's y is greater than x minus 1. Okay, so slope intercept form means my y intercept is at negative 1, so I'm going to put a dot at negative 1. My slope there is 1 over 1, so I'm going to do 1 over 1, rise over run and generate my slope. Okay, I'll do several little points on there. How many you do obviously would be your choice as to how accurate you're going to be. Okay, now you're going to look at that sign and as we recall when it's a greater than or a less than sign it means that it is a dotted line. So when I put my ruler on there to make the dotted line How dotted you make it, your choice, but it should be dotted enough so that people can tell it's a dotted line. Okay, now at this point we have shading that we have to put on. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the point zero, 00 to test. So right there is zero, 00, all right, it's on this side of the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test that in the equation and see if I have a true or a false statement. So I am going to test. 0, 0 in that first equation. So I'm going to plug 0 in for x, I'm going to plug 0 in for y. So 0 is greater than, I'm checking, question mark is that, greater than 0 minus 1. Well, 0 minus 1 is going to give us um, a negative 1. So 0 greater than negative 1. Is 0 greater than negative 1? Yes, it is. So that is a true statement. So what that means is since the point zero, 0, made this inequality true, then every point on this side of the line is going to be also make it true. Now a lot of different people, the, uh, the concept here is to shade on this side. Depends on how much shading you want. Um, a lot of teachers will tell you just to do arrows and saying, oh, okay, I'm going to shade on this side of the line. That works, all right? Or you can literally shade the entire side with your paper. Okay, with your pencil rather. All right, now let's take a look at the second line. We're going to go graphing it. Y is greater than or equal to negative two-thirds x plus four. Again, in slope intercept form with that y intercept of four. So one, two, three, four. This time I've got a negative slope of two-thirds. So I'm going to go up two and to the left three. One, two, three. Up two to the left three. One, two, three. And let's go down two and to the right three. One, two, three. Down two to the right three. All right, again, we look at that symbol in there. It's got the equal to part. The equal to part tells me that it is going to be a straight line. Straight solid line, I should say. Okay, now again, I've got to decide which side of that line is going to get shaded. So again, I'm going to test zero, zero, just simply because that's an easy point to plug in. So I'm going to test the point zero, zero. I'm plugging zero in for x and zero in for y. So I'll have a zero greater than or equal to question mark. Is that greater than or equal to a negative two thirds times zero plus four? All right, well anything times zero, zero plus four is gonna give me four on that right hand side. So zero greater than or equal to four. All right, that is a false statement. Okay, so which means this point zero, zero did not make this inequality true. So none of the points on this side of the orange line is going to make it true, but on the other side, every one of them will. Okay, so that means I would shade over here. And again, if you want to shade the entire thing, you can. If not, a lot of people will just do the, okay, I'm going to show that I'm shading this side. Okay, now the question is then, all right, what part got shaded twice? All right, well, you've got purple arrows going this way. You've got orange arrows going this way. All right, so this region in here got shaded twice. Okay, so... Um, 
this part in here is going to be where the solution is. All right, a lot of places and a lot of different teachers will have you write maybe say solution set in that area to clearly indicate where that's at. All right, I also want to show you what it's going to be like um, if you were doing this in, like, say, a My Math Lab or a Math Excel or any type of online math program. Okay, let's look at this. I've re-graphed this. All right, a lot of times what you will see in those um, online types of programs is they're not going to show that entire purple line being graphed this way. They're not going to show the entire orange line being graphed. They're going to give you choices where it's just got the shaded area where the solutions lie. So this part would still be dotted. This part would still be solid. Now, this point right here, which is the point 3-2, all right, it the two lines crossed right at that point. So what you do have to do to make a decision about whether this dot is going to be open or closed, you're going to take this, plug it into um, the top equation, see if it's true, and then plug it into the bottom, see if it's true. All right, and in this scenario, we need an open dot because if I plug 3, 2 into this top one, which you ought to be able to do that in your head real quick, 3 minus 1 is going to give you a 2 on this side, and you'd have a 2 here. 2 is not it's not greater than 2. This says 2 greater than 2. So this is not a solution for the purple line. So that's why it's got to be the open dot. All right, but that's the difference between if you graph it by hand and if you graph it on, you know, you see it graphed in like some type of um, online math program that you might be working in. Again, if you graph it by hand, it's probably going to look more like this because you'll have the whole entire lines on there. All right, now let's do another one. Okay, so on this one we're going to do... Um, a couple that are in standard form. Okay, now in standard form, I do use a shortcut method. Um, so if you need review on the shortcut method that I'm going to show here in a minute, then um, I'm sure I've got other videos on my <clears throat> channel that will go into way more detail than I do here. Okay, um, standard form is AX plus B y equals c for an equation. I know these are inequalities, but this is your standard form. All right, I use formulas for finding the x and y intercept. So my x intercept formula is c over a. My y intercept formula is c over b. And if need be, you can also calculate your slope. Your slope formula is negative a over b. So just for people that maybe have not seen that and is not going to know what the heck I'm doing when I graph these, I do use the shortcut method. I, I do not typically solve these equations for y. You can make a lot of mistakes when you solve for y. And so I generally just go ahead and use these formulas. <clears throat> okay, so let's graph the purple line. All right, so I'm going to do the x-intercept, which is c over a, which is 6 over 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. That means my x-intercept is 3. So I'm going to go to the x-axis. I'm going to put a dot on 3. All right, y-intercept is c over b, so here's c, here's b, 6 divided by 3 is 2, so my y-intercept is 2, so I'm going to go up to 2. All right, and very quickly there I can graph that line now. All right, I'm going to look right here. That's going to tell me solid line when I draw it. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that on. Okay, now I need to decide which way I'm going to shade. And so I am going to test 0, 0. I always test 0, 0 just because it's an easy point to test when you plug into your equation. All right, so looking at that equation, I would have 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0 and asking myself, is that greater than or equal to 6? Well, obviously on the left-hand side there, it's going to be 0 is greater than or equal to 6, and that is a false statement. All right, so again, that means this point 0, 0 is not a solution to that inequality. So none of the points on this side are solutions. So obviously then on the other side, all of these are solutions. Okay, so again, you could shade this entire side or you could just kind of indicate, okay, my shading is up here. Really whatever your preference is on that. All right, now let's go ahead and add our orange line. Okay, so our orange line again is <clears throat> in that standard form. So if I do the x-intercept, all right, so 0 divided by 2 is 0. So my x-intercept is 0. So I go to the x-axis uh, and put a dot on 0. 
Okay, and then the y-intercept is 0 divided by 3, and it is also 0. All right, so that means I got two points that are the exact same point. All right, so I cannot use the x and y-intercept on this because I only have one point and I need at least two points to graph. So in this case, that means I am going to have to go ahead and use my slope formula here on that orange line. A negative a would be a negative 2 over the 3, so I'm going to have a negative 2 thirds slope. Okay, so I'm going to run that slope from this um, x and y intercept. Okay, so I'm going to go down 2 and to the right 3, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to go down 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, to the right 3. Let's do it again. I'll go up, up 2 and to the right 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3. All right, that's enough on there. Okay, so again, I'm going to look at the inequality symbol. It's got the equal to part, which means I need a solid line. Okay, now I've got to decide which side of that orange line I'm going to shade on. Now, on this one, I can't test 0, 0 because the line goes through 0, 0, and that's okay. I need to pick some other point that's going to be um, easy to test. I don't know, let's go with negative 1, um, negative 1. That point right, right there, I could test that because that wouldn't be too hard to plug in. All right, so this time I'm going to test negative 1, negative 1. Okay, and plugging that in, I'm going to have 2 times a negative 1 plus 3 times a negative 1 is less than or equal to 0. Question mark, is that true? Uh, negative 2 plus negative 3 less than or equal to 0. Negative 5 less than or equal to 0. That is true. All right, so this negative 1, one point that I tested is on this side of the line, and it comes up true, so that means all of the points on this line, this side of the line, are true. So then... I would be shading this direction. Okay, so if you shaded all of this area up here purple and you shaded all of this area down here orange, none of the shading overlaps. All right, so this one turns out to be a no solution. So let's write no solution. It's a no solution because when you shaded, none of the shading parts overlapped. Okay, so um, actually just two quick examples here of this graphing a system of linear inequalities. All right, lots of different techniques. They can put the form, um, you know, the form of the inequalities in just about any form. How you ch choose to shade, whether you shade the whole graph or you just do the arrows, that's all choices. All right, recommendation is always to test 0, 0, unless, of course, the line runs through 0, 0, in which case you need to point a, pick a different point. Um, definitely thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, don't forget to share with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.